my project was called centered around the exploration of Mars. So for my original project, I was designing different drones or systems that had the purpose of exploring or helping to explore Mars. Now for this presentation, I'll be explaining a drone that I designed that I call the snake drone. Although I will mention a few of the other systems that I designed because, well, they're meant to help the drones. So the purpose of the snake drone is, in particular is to explore the thinner trenches and the caves and the lava tubes of Mars. This is because it, this is purpose because most of the previous drones on Mars have had the purpose of exploring the surface. Now what I want to do with the snake drone is have a look under the surface. So the snake drone's design is, well, it resembles a snake, and its body is meant to multiple sections. With the exception of the head, each section consists of a tread or wheel at the bottom, um, the center body, and protective plate on the top. Like a snake's belly scales, the wheel under each section moves the snake forward. If ever there is debris that jams the wheels and prevents them from moving, the drone can use an alternate form of mobility by slithering like a desert snake. The snake is also able to move around and over debris, which is useful if ever there was a Mars quake before the snake had gotten into a tunnel. The sections also allow the snake to tilt its head back if ever it's swallowing some samples for another drone to look over. On the back of each section is a protective plate with the purpose of protecting the drone's main body from any falling debris. I added this because since Mars does have Mars quakes, it's possible that the snake drone may find itself in a tunnel that is unstable. And because if it has something to protect it, it'll be able to continue working. There are small versions of these protective plates over the drone's optics to, to prevent them from being shattered. The head of the snake drone has a hinged mouth, which allows it to swallow samples into storage behind the mouth for a later study. The drone has optics like where a snake would for visuals inside the caves and tunnels so that we can have additional data aside from just the samples. As I mentioned before, if its wheels were to be clogged, it would still be mobile using the desert snake slithering which is something that I added because when I was designing the drone, one of the things that came up was what if the wheels get clogged? And it was something that was brought up when I was thinking about the drones before, which only really had one form of mobility, which was just the wheels. The, the snake drones primary, uh, primarily uses the forward technique though, so that if it when it goes into tunnels, it can it doesn't risk damaging the walls of the tunnel or damaging itself. This also allows it to go into thinner tunnels. So one of the things that has to do with some of the other systems that I designed includes how the snake drone gets its energy. So in an area where the snake drone would be exploring, say at the bottom of a trench or in the entrance of a cave, there'd be a, a charging station for the drone, which is connected to a solar panel on the surface. Now, one might, for the other drones that have existed before, put the solar panel on the back of the drone. But since the snake drone's underground, it needs 
it risks the sort of kind of being damaged. Tina, I'm sorry for jumping in. I'm curious, did, are you showing us pictures? Because we don't see them yet. Oh, I haven't been, but... Perfect. I, I just wanted to make sure we weren't missing it. Keep going. You're doing great. I have so many questions written down already. So, as the, the solar panels aren't on the back of the snake drone, because if it was, then it would risk the solar panels being damaged, and it would have to result in the snake drone needing to go to the surface, which would take up extra time when it's trying to get electricity. One of the features on the solar panels is something that would is something that I call a dust dust wiper which its purpose is to wipe as the as it suggests to wipe dust off of the solar panels so that it can work at optimal efficiency so that's all i had written down for my presentation but if there's any questions i'm happy to answer them and here's some visuals oh i was so curious to see visuals wow well done. Christina, I have to ask, why a snake drone? Where does that come from? I've never, like, I know nothing about drones, I'll be honest. I know a little bit about tap dancing, but um, <laughs> like, wh where did you find that idea? What inspired you? Well, when I was designing this, the drones for Mars. At first, I was just looking at the things that have already been created. But after a while, it, I thought that maybe instead of looking at things that humans have created, maybe I should look at things that naturally exist in those types of environments. So I decided to look at snakes because, well, they can move on solid ground, but they also have an alternative way in a desert area, which Mars is. I'm glad I asked because that makes so much sense and I feel very inspired now to look at the world and look at nature and consider is there a solution already or some sort of inspiration to really seek that's that's a smart connection that you've made and creative application um, of something that I've just been petrified of so Thank you for contextualizing <laughs> stakes too. <laughs> Actually, Christina is like showing like really uh, some expertise in this field of uh, design and science and design is called biomimicry, you know, which is basing design on things from nature. And uh, she gave like a very strong argument on how, why she chose uh, a snake design. Tell me something, Christina, could you think other um, uh, nature examples that could be based for another design that could be useful for Mars exploration besides a snake? Absolutely. There's a lot of creatures that exist and they wouldn't be able to exist if they didn't have an, some sort of advantage that say something else doesn't have. Yeah, definitely. Like nature and evolution has done the job solving uh, problems uh, and, and many, many, many organisms have developed the way to do it, right? So uh, could you think of uh, your design? What applications could it have uh, to use it like not only Mars? What about exploring Earth? Could you repeat that, please? My connection was a bit fuzzy just now. Yeah, uh, I'm also going to turn off my video to save some bandwidth. Uh, like, can you think of an, an application for your snake design for not only Mars, but exploration here on Earth? Did you hear that? I think she's having trouble. Oh no. Yeah, I think your connection. Oh, no. 
Christina, can you hear us? I can hear now. Just, okay. But just before I can. The question is, do you see other applications for the snake drone design, not only on Mars? I can definitely think of some applications for the snake drone on Earth. An example could be in, in say, an earthquake. A smaller version of the snake drone could be very useful for looking through the debris for any survivors or to help people, since a human would probably be too heavy and would have only in one spot, a snake drone would spread to the entire body. There she goes, like a biomimicry expert. That is an awesome idea. And I think like you have like a lot of work to do on, on, on your next designs, Christina. I, 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 I really congratulate you. Christina, can you tell us what's the step, like you have those amazing drawings, what's the next step you need to take to, to get to a prototype? Pardon? The connection's a bit off. My question is what you, we saw awesome drawings and there's such clear concepts and even applications and it's very obvious to me that there's going to be demand for your snake drone. What's the next step that you need to take in your process, maybe to, to develop towards a prototype or towards, towards a product? Something I want to look to next would probably be how to build this, such as how big it would be, what I would make, make it out of, all that more specific and technical things. Fantastic. Do you know where you're going to go look for, for some guidance on that? I'm wondering if anyone who's watching GIFT right now um, might have some guidance to provide you for um, how to proceed there, because I know that we have some pretty clever um, and diverse engineers and inventors um, in this community. Um, so yeah, I'm wondering if, if we can help find some guidance and support for you because it sounds like a really worthwhile idea to continue pursuing. Yeah, uh, I think I will, um, I will also like send you a couple of contacts, Christina, for that could be like good options for that. Yeah, definitely, yes. And that's global networking, live, amazing. Yeah. Christina, thank you for sharing your inspiring invention with us. Um, we look forward to staying in touch and hearing more about how this idea continues to grow or perhaps new ideas um, that you come up with. Uh, you sh surely um, inspired me to look around my um, nature differently and, um, and, and, and seek out opportunities for biomimicry. So thank you so much for that and uh, for sharing with us today so bravely. Awesome to meet you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.